been the foundation for LTE with a focus on implementation and operational considerations on the physical layer. Let's give you a little bit of background. Um, Dr. Simo has been teaching Verizon Wireless employees or former JV companies of Verizon Wireless for 21 years. This is the 21st year of teaching all of us. So. Um, um, from 1986 to the present, he helped Motorola, Lucent, Samsung, Nokia, Bell Canada, and Verizon in all the development, performance, and optimization of our CDMA networks, and he's here to help with our LTE networks as well. Um, he also provided a series of training for the very first commercial implementation of CDMA in Hong Kong. So with that, Simo was a finalist in the NASA astronaut selection process in 1994 and 1996. His 1994 co-finalists included space heroes Rick Husband and William McCool, who were respect <coughs> respectively commander and pilot of the Space Shuttle Columbia, which was tragically lost in February of 2003. Um, he's the author of a series of books, video tapes, and audio tapes on satellite communication, VSATs, and CDMA technology. So with that, Dr. Simo. Thank you so very much. It is really a pleasure to be here today. And uh, as uh, Karen just mentioned, I'm uh, celebrating my 21st uh, year uh, teaching CDMA around the world, particularly uh, uh, to your company and, and, uh, and your staff, starting with U.S. President Vector in Seattle. Right descendants <laughs> of uh, U.S. Western culture until uh, to, to, uh, today. Now, um, I would probably say that uh, before I get started with the, the main presentation, there is a proverb uh, which says, from the continent I come from, which is Africa, who says, if you want to walk fast, walk along. But if you want to go far, walk the others. And I've been here 21 years because of you, so really this is a presentation is dedicated to you. I had a wonderful time the past 24 21 years. And I must also say that uh, I wrote a book last year, and uh, I didn't know exactly how to introduce the book. And at the end, I basically dedicated it to you all who have really made this information technology revolution reality. I mean, 21 years ago, it was really just a matter of fiction when we were thinking about the pocket phone. When I first presented the CDMA course, people didn't believe that we can actually uh, have several users on the same sector using the same frequency at the same time because they were very used to the analog concept. When we went to EDDO, People didn't believe we can serve the internet traffic video. And now when as we migrate towards LTE, we are now putting ourselves in a position to support not only fully integrated digital services, voice, video, data, active data, but also high definition television capabilities. So I think that we are completely integrating uh, the uh, telecommunication and information technology services in one horrible platform. One final cool note of reflection is that in a satellite communications world, 21 years or 20 years ago, the first VSAT networks actually uh, developed with it, the first one for Federal Express. You had to be a Fortune 500 company to develop a T1 network. It was extremely expensive to do that, to bypass the AT&T developed operating companies. Today, if I offer you T1 from the hip pocket, you'll think it's too small a rate uh, to. <laughs> and the LTE, we're thinking at providing for that something like 100 megabits per second in the downlink, uh, assuming, of course, that we have a 20 megabit spectrum fully allocated to one single user. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick review of the physical data. This kind of form is very good because it gives us the ability 
not to be too serious, but basically to present difficult concepts using rather simple terms and perhaps some analogies as well. But let's start with the definition. I'm going to start with the definition. Then give you uh, the key components and technology components, pieces, that are making LTV the superstar technology that it is today. It is simply a code. It's called a gold code. But think of it basically as a combination of a PN code and an orthogonal code. So just think of it as a code for right now. Then we have the primary. Uh, these are the, the, the two reference signals. The red signals are used to transmit antenna port 1, signals from antenna port 1. And the yellow signals are the reference signals to support the antenna port 2. Remember we created the two layers of Nemo here. Each parallel data stream has its own reference signal, obviously. Right? So these are the two reference signals that are basically guiding and helping decode the two data streams transmitted by the two antenna ports of the Nemo. Now, in addition to that reference signal, we have two other channels called the sync channel, the synchronization channels. There are two of them, and I'm going to tell you why we have two. The first is called the primary sync channel. It is the blue channel that you see there. And the second is called the secondary uh, sync channel. Let's disconnect for a second from the sync channel. And I just assume that you decided to travel to one of the destination cities around the world. In your city, there are three airports. One serving Asia with 168 destinations. Another serving Europe with 168 destinations. And a third airport serving Latin America with 168 destinations. Let's say you pick a country in, uh, or destination in Asia. What do they have to do locally? You don't have to go to airport number two or airport number three. You go directly to airport number one, the airport serving Asia. That basically simplifies your access to the airport or to your destination because instead of scanning all 504, which is 168 times three, you are now focusing only on the Asian destinations. So the primary sync channel is like choosing one of three airports. So when you start your self-search, there are three codes that you have to choose from. And how do you choose from? You choose from because when you measured it, it offered the best signal strength, maybe. In that case, you will assume that it's the closest side to you. It's the best for your side. But you have to choose one. If you choose one strong site using this primary sync channel, it reduces your search from 504 to 168. That's the role of the primary sync channel for that. Now, this chart here took me five days to create, so you might as well enjoy it. <laughs>